Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Reading today Isaiah chapter 39, beginning in verse number 1. Get your Bible, open it up to Isaiah chapter 39. We'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series. This is the fifth going through the entire Bible in the last 38 years. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you ever need is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Isaiah 39. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. The king of Babylon was more interested in forming an alliance against mighty Assyria than he was about wishing Hezekiah well. Look at verse 2. And Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his treasures, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armory and all that was found in his treasuries. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Well, Hezekiah was flattered by the attention that he received from Babylon. So Hezekiah let his pride get the best of him. He let down his guard and he did a very foolish thing. Hezekiah showed the officials from Babylon the nation's great wealth and armory. Where it was, he just showed it to him, everything. And where it was, not a very smart thing to do. Verse 3, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? He's talking about what did these people from Babylon want? And from where came they unto you? And Hezekiah said, They've come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. And Isaiah Hezekiah now knows that what he did was wrong. So he attempts to cover his mistake by telling Isaiah that the men came from a far country. He came, they came from a far country. Well, I don't know. I don't think they did. Look at verse 4. Then said he, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in my house. Have they seen? There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Isaiah would not be asking such scrutinizing questions if showing the Babylonians everything was not the wrong thing to do. Now, to Hezekiah's credit, he told Isaiah the truth. And it must have been obvious to Hezekiah that The reason he was asking, because if that's what he did, it was not good. But Hezekiah admitted, he confessed, yeah, that's what I did. I showed him everything there is to see, anything of any worth. Well, verse 5, then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. In other words, God has something to say to you, Hezekiah. 6, behold, the days come that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. God says all those valuables that you so proudly displayed for the Babylonians to see are going to be taken away from you and from your offspring by those same Babylonians. Now, right now, You know, 
Hezekiah probably didn't think there was any danger in telling Babylon that. There was all this to gain. He could exercise his pride and boast. But really, there was nothing to lose at this particular time because Babylon was certainly not a world superpower. They weren't much to speak of at this point. Assyria was. He never would have showed it to Assyria, but Babylon's on the way up, and they will eventually conquer Assyria. And then, and then, they're going to go looking for that treasure that was shown them by Hezekiah. Verse 7. And of your sons that shall issue from you, whom you shall beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So the Babylonians will also take Hezekiah's sons. And they did. And they even took Manasseh, who was extremely wicked. Manasseh deserved to be taken away because he was the worst king that Judah probably ever had. And they took him and they took all the people that were skilled and valuable to them, and of course all the riches. They destroyed the house of God. They took all the wealth, the gold out of the house of God. Now, of course, this didn't all happen because Hezekiah showed the Babylonian representatives of the king all this wealth. The the main reason that all these bad things eventually happened is because Israel turned away from God. And then God used Babylon as his rod of correction to punish them and to take them into captivity. But this certainly set the stage for them to come in and steal all the valuables. It maybe helped motivated them, humanly speaking, but still, it was wrong for Hezekiah to do this because it was a, an act of pride and boasting, which is sin. It's not self-promotion, which is how it has been relabeled today, self-promotion. Baloney. It's pride, it's arrogance, it's boasting, it's sin. So it was wrong, but still, what Isaiah describes will happen in the future, that did happen, and it wouldn't have happened if Israel had not completely rebelled against Almighty God. Look at verse 8. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, this is incredible, good is the word of the Lord which you have spoken. Better explain that, Hezekiah. Good? Isaiah just prophesied the word of God, all the horrible things that are going to happen to Israel, and to even Hezekiah's offspring, and his response is, good is the word of the Lord? Here's his explanation. He said, moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. Unbelievable. This guy has a reputation, and he has been a godly man, but to, come out, to let this come out of his mouth is just incredible to me. The king hears about all the troubles that his prideful actions will help bring upon his family and upon his nation. And Hezekiah's response was that, hey, I'm, I'm glad about one thing. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. That's a response that probably no one, especially Isaiah, would expect to come from Hezekiah completely self-centered and selfish. You know, maybe he would have been better off dying of that disease. We'll leave that up to the wisdom of God who healed him. But uh, Hezekiah also became the father of Manasseh during this extra 15 years that he had been given by God. And Manasseh turned out to be just the worst king probably. No. There's no probably he was the worst king in the history of the southern kingdom. Well, I think we'll stop there and we'll pick it up fresh in Isaiah 40 next time. Now remember, you can study all of God's word with me 
at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Just choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. This is the fifth. The New Testament is done. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be. Very simple. Pray for me. Pray for God's Word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Write a note. Put it on your refrigerator door, your bathroom mirror. Pray for Mike. Pray for God's Word and do it again. And also when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also will make you a part of this ministry. Thanks for studying with me. Appreciate it. See you next time on Scripture Verse by Verse.